Welcome to my Cisco Scaling Network Lab Review. Here we're doing Lab 7344, Investigating the Dual SF FSM. So I already have this diagram on a different screen. Go and read through the background, and I'm going to hop directly into Part 1. So Part 1, it wants us to do some basic information. So what command will we see? Uh, display the routing table. Show IP route. Are there any of the router load balancing between any of the networks? So let's hop on each of the routers and let's find out. Enable show IP route. And we can go ahead and go through them. On R1, we're looking at the 192.168.10 network. We have two that are connect directly connected that we could be balancing from. Let's hop over to R2. Show IP route. Again, we're looking at the 192.168. Uh, let's go ahead and expand this out a little bit to make this easier to read. 10.4 network. We have both paths there. And lastly, R3. Show IP route. And again, if we're looking at the 172.16.3 network, we have two paths that we can take. Alright, so now that we've done that, we have that question answered. Let's go and verify that each of the routers has the entire neighbor table. How we can do that is show IP AGRP neighbors. Show IP EIGRP neighbors. And that's our neighbor table. And it's safe to say that it's a small converged network, so we can do that on all of them, but they should all have them. All routers will have the two neighbors. We can always verify. Show IP AGRP neighbor. And again, both are there. Show IP AGRP neighbors. And again, both are there. So moving on to step three. What command will display the topology table? Well, we've already talked about it in the previous lab, but show IP EIGRP question mark. We have interfaces, we have neighbors, we have topology. So here we can do topology. And that will show you the topology of all of them. Where are there more successor paths than networks? There are six networks in the topology. But each router has two successor paths to one network. R1 has two successor paths to, for example, the 192.168.10.8 network. Alright, so copy the output of R1's topology table to text editor so we can go back to it later. Alright, so R1, we did show topology, copy of that. I'm pasting that in the notepad for us to use later, as 3B said to do. So let's go ahead and move on to part 2. On R1, let's go ahead and turn on the debug of it. So we do that by debug. We're debugging EIGRP FSM. Let's go ahead and force a update. So I'm going to leave R1 open. I'm going to hop on R3. Config T. We're going to go ahead and go to int 0000. We're going to turn off the link between the two. Here's the dual process. 
once we did our shutdown, it sent a router update, the metric, the destination, update, the link went down, then I found the feasible successor for the destination, it did the metric, did the update, and now it's removing the destination from the next hop, and it's flushing that, flushing that destination. So we don't want to disable We don't want to disable it yet. We actually want to look at the debug the output indicated the change in the route table, which we just did. So let's verify that the network is no longer R1's routing table. Show IP route. We're looking for the 192.168.10.4 network. Here's the 10, 10, 8. All right, I don't see it there. So there we go. Describe any other changes to the route information. It updated and deleted the link. The 192.168.10.8 is the only one that has one route instead of two. Step four. Examine the topology table for R1 again and compare it to the previous one. Show IP EIGRP topology table. One ninety two one six eight or sorry, one seventy two sixteen one, one seventy two sixteen two and three. 192.168.1, well that's no longer there, and we have two successors to 192.168.10.8 where the updated one only has one, so this path is no longer valid because that belonged on the 192.168.10.4 10.4 network, 5 and 6 were the usable, and that was one of the paths that we took down. So let's go ahead and restore the connectivity between R1 and R2. So, with the R1 and R3 windows side by side, Let's do a no shut and give it a second. You'll see it turns back on and it immediately starts doing the updates and the destination and forms the adjacent scene. So you should find the feasible successor and it should install the route. So how did the dual FSM handle the change topology when the R1 route came back up? I'm answering that question right there. The route between R1 and R3 on the network 170 or 192.168.10.4 came back up and the adjacencies were formed like normal. And that's actually the end of this lab. Let's go and check results just to verify. And there's the assessment item. So that's the end of this lab. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.